Good morning. morning. Welcome to Elm Street Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Here at Elm Street, you will find that Christians are joyous, joyous people sharing faith and service together. For those of you seeking a new place to worship, we invite you to join us in person or via Facebook every Sunday. If you're joining us over Facebook, please comment and share any prayer requests that you might have. We are an active church, supporting many missions and offering programs through our Fellowship for All group. Following church, please join us for coffee hour. This is a chance to speak with us about our church and activities. We send weekly emails and a monthly newsletter that you might like to receive. Fill out a welcome card with your contact information to get yourself connected. If you have a talent to share, like singing, we would love to have you join us. Our announcements this morning are Bible study is Monday, November 4th at 6.30. The room opens at 6.20. Um, We'll be studying the Chosen Season 4. If you need a link, please see Pastor Kathy. Prayer meeting is every Wednesday evening at 7. Again, see Pastor Kathy for the link. Our October mission of the month is uh, personal care items for school. This is the Southbridge Academy that we're collecting personal care items, and it looks like we have quite a few. So if you want to pick some more up, please do. And Sue and I will be dropping them off probably at the beginning of next month. The Way is another um, study, Our Origins of Christianity as Viewed by the Early Disciples. This is led by Marcy on Zoom, Thursday evenings at 7. If you need the link, please seek her out. We have confirmation class today after service. We have an adult exploring Christianity class, which is from 11.30 to 12.45. That meets on the opposite weeks of confirmation class. So the next one will be next Sunday following service. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, then we'll start with our morning prelude.
Thank you. Join me in the call to worship in the bold print. Gathered people of God, let us bless the Lord now and at all times. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name forever. May our souls boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Holy God, who has called us here, we long for the hope and healing we know you offer when we cry to you. Meet us in this time and strengthen our faith that we may follow you on the way. Amen. Now we're going to do this without Toby, so we'll see how well we do. The opening hymn is uh, in the Blue Hymnal uh, 628, We Cannot Measure How You Heal. I I don't know this one. Does anybody know it? Oh, it's going to be fun. Pardon? Chris. Chris, Chris, can you do like, like, can we learn it one line at a time? You're going to play it through, then I won't remember, but okay. All right.
Not bad. Not bad. Please join me in the invitation to discipleship. We take heart because Christ has called us. Christ has offered us new life and new opportunities, new visions and new dreams. Are you ready to accept that offering? Are you ready to receive new life and follow? Again, please join me. Lord of hosts, prepare us for your work. Widen our vision to see others. Widen our faith to accept others. Break down our barriers that prevent us from hearing you. Tear down the walls that prevent us from doing your work in the world. Let us learn to say yes to your call. Amen. Well, siblings in Christ, God calls us sometimes in the softness of the cooling breeze and sometimes in the flames of an inferno. God calls us when we are awake and when we are dreaming. God will never abandon us. Amen. We have special music by the Bells, old time gospel melody arranged by Sandra R. Wagner from the Bells and Bows.
Our invitation to the offering. The Lord is indeed good, for God has blessed us richly. Let us offer back a portion in gratitude and love. We'll now accept the morning offering. the offertory prayer together. God, the creator of the universe, we offer to you these gifts for the glory of your kingdom. In the name of God, Father and Mother, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we've changed order up a little bit. So Rose, when you go up to read the scripture, which um, we have two things to do before then. I give instructions to the congregation because they're listening for different things. So uh, I just want to tell you that so I don't like scare you when you get up there. Okay. All right. Let's do our prayer of illumination. Dear God, let us not only hear of you, but see you with our own eyes through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the sermon hymn is, O Christ the Healer, We Have Come. I don't know this one either. Huh? The whole way, all right.
right, so we have four parts, but we're going to put two of them together. So the disciples and the crowd are you guys. So you guys are the disciples and the crowd. And you are Bartimaeus. And you guys are Jesus. So Rose, when you read, they're listening for their parts. Because okay. then we're going to talk about what they hear. And you may pick any part you want, and so may Trish. I'm not assigning parts to you. All right. Today's scripture reading is from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Blind Bartimaeus receives his sight. Then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. The, man, the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received the, the, his sight and followed Jesus along the road. I thought about asking y'all to move up, but then I didn't know if that was a possibility. Not looking good. Okay. All right. So uh, you guys are the crowd and the disciples, right? And you guys are Bartimaeus. And you guys are Jesus. Now, this is the last story in this little section of Mark that has to do with blindness. And it's not just physical blindness, but spiritual blindness. Because as you recall, Jesus has told his disciples three times what's going to happen to him once they get to Jerusalem. And three times they have just not paid attention. In fact, at one point, Peter had said, oh, that can't happen to you, and Jesus yells at him, get behind me, Satan. And the next time Jesus tells them, and he, they're just like, well, they can't take it in. They just can't figure it out. So in this story, we have Jesus, the disciples, and the crowds. They're working their way to... Jerusalem, and here is this man, Bartimaeus. Now, Bar means son, and in the uh, I is a connecting vowel, and Timus is the name of the father, so it's son of Timus. Just so you get that little bit of Hebrew in there, that's free, that's for jeopardy. So, when you're listening at this story, Bartimaeus is crying out, to Jesus. I don't know if Jesus doesn't hear him right away, but what do the crowds and the disciples do? They say, just be quiet. Shh. Don't, 
don't, don't be bothering Jesus, don't be pestering Jesus, right? Don't do that. And yet, does Bartimaeus, does Bartimaeus listen to them? No, he doesn't. You're right, Lo, he doesn't. Because he is blind. He knows he can be healed. He knows Jesus of Nazareth is the only guy who can do it. In fact, he knows who Jesus is. He says, Son of David, which is another way to say Messiah. So, um, finally, Jesus does something about it. So what does Jesus do? Jesus people. Yeah, they bring him here. Bring him over here. And he, he drops his cloak and he run, and gets up and fast as he can, he makes his way to Jesus. And it's, it's this healing that takes place. Now, how would Bartimaeus, how are you feeling? You have been hollering for Jesus. You've been ignored by the crowd and the disciples. Not even just ignored. You've been told to shut up. And finally, Jesus has had enough of that. And he says, well, come here. So how is that making you feel? Good. Yeah, like finally, finally, somebody who could do something about my problem is, is hearing me call. So, and Jesus does, and this is what I really like about Jesus, he doesn't reprimand the crowd and the disciples for telling him to shut up. He could. He could say to the crowd and the disciples, just let him come, like he does with the little children, when he says, no, let the little children come to me, right? Because there he, he uh, corrects them, but here he doesn't. And so once he heals Bartimaeus, right, he, well, first he asks, he says, well, what do you want from me? Right, what do you want from me? Here's Jesus, he's the healer, he makes bread and fish multiply, and he, like, walks on the water, and he does all kinds of cool stuff, and, and he says, well, now what do you want from me? And Bartimaeus is a not messing around. I want to see. I want to see. And when he says that, what happens? He sees. Yes, Jesus told him to see first, yes. And then he sees. And then what does he do? Bartimaeus, what do you do? Yep, you just follow Jesus. Now, sometimes when people have been healed, Jesus will tell them to go home. Sometimes when they're healed, he'll say, go to the priest and get checked out. But this man had called him son of David, the, the term for Messiah. And he had understood the Messiah as being a military leader who would make Israel their own kingdom again. So even though he physically could see, he was just spiritually as blind as anybody else. Because as we know, what will happen is that they will go into Jerusalem and they'll do the whole Palm uh, Sunday donkey thing and it'll be just wonderful and then a week later we're arrested and horrible things happen and we have Good Friday and then it's Easter. But, but nobody including the disciples has accepted that. And we know the story, right? Because we live this story every year. We come into this story at Advent, which happens very shortly in the beginning of December. And we live the birth all the way through the death and resurrection and then the Christ kingdom. Every year. It's called a liturgical calendar. So we know that. But what if we didn't 
know that? And do we just know that in our head or do we know that in our heart? How do we live that out? So I have some questions that I thought we could ponder together. If I can read them. Bartimaeus and the crowd are experiencing great anticipation for going into Jerusalem. Do we experience great anticipation as we go along in the liturgical year? Or do we just say, okay, this is liturgical, this is where we are, and we're going to be over here soon, and uh, are we experiencing anticipation? And I would say that we're probably not experiencing, at least not very much. Because I think, and see if this rings right for you, that even though we understand the story and we see the story, that maybe we are just as blind as the disciples. Even though we know that story, it's hard to incorporate that into our daily lives. What would it be like if we did incorporate the story of Jesus into our daily lives? Or let me ask you, how do you incorporate? Because I know that some of us do incorporate some parts of the story um, in our daily So how do you do that? Listen. Pardon? You listen. Listen. Have you seen the great, unseen, unhearing, lost crowd and one man who knows that's interesting. So Hamer says you, you listen because there's this huge crowd, kind of amoeba-like, and there's one man who knows why he's there. And it's not the reason that other people think that he's there. What else? Pardon? Yeah, being kind to others. Yeah, not nice, but you're right, Eric. It's being kind to others. Because that kindness, right, there's, the kindness is a love. Nice is, we don't want to be nice. We want to be kind. Nice is, honey, do I look fat in these jeans? And nice says, no, it's not the jeans, right? Right? <laughs> but kind is, is actually an empathetic um, response or action. Okay. Now, how does our hope... So we still live with this understanding of a second coming, right? Even though we don't preach, preach revelations in a doomsday, apocalyptic way, we still understand that the story is not completely finished. And so there is still this hope that Jesus will return. And, and we don't know exactly what that will look like. If you go to Lancaster County, you'll see all these signs because the very plain Mennonites will put signs up all over their property that says, Jesus is coming, are you ready? Um, that's, their, that's their mission, to the, their evangelism to the outside world, this big sign in the field. Um, right next to the, to the tobacco plants. Uh, I don't get that, but... Um, so, the people in Jesus' day thought 
that Jesus is going to bring a worldly kingdom to make Israel its own kingdom again, have its own army, and get rid of outsiders and um, the Romans and all the people that were not Israel. And as I listen to many people who talk about Revelation and Jesus' second coming, I hear a lot of the same thing, only it's people who aren't Christian. We get the whole Timothy Leahy uh, left behind, you know, they'll just snap some people up and everybody else will be left behind. Or um, you get the whole beast and the um, uh, Antichrist, and that's the S, the Antichrist, because there's more than one. And so what Christianity has done is it has kind of marked afterlife as how Christ returns or how we return to Christ. And not necessarily in this physical world. And I think that that I think there is an afterlife, and I think that it is part of the Christian world. But I think that we have to pay attention to this world because we are given life here, and we're told to love God, neighbor, and self. And this is where we do it. We do it here. So, one last question. All right. The crowds and the disciples miss the need of Bartimaeus. Right? And they missed it, didn't want to deal with it. So what needs are we missing? What things are we not wanting to deal with today? Did the crowd miss it or did they ignore it? They, I think they ignored it because they told him, shh, stop. So what, what are we not paying attention to today that maybe we ought to be paying attention to? Yeah, there are some things we're really good at, Llewellyn. And, and we can't solve problems like homelessness. We don't have the resources to solve that problem. Right? All we can do is alleviate some of the suffering. Callie. Okay, so say that again. If we pay attention to the reaction. Okay, so we pay attention to what, that people do stuff, but we don't pay attention to why they're doing it. Gotcha. That's very good. Because sometimes we get caught up with bad behavior and we don't think about, well, why is that behavior manifesting yeah, manifesting itself? Thank you, Lane. <laughs> that's, one, that's one for me. I remembered his name. Was that the difference between sight and blindness? Because we see what's happening, but we're blind to why it's happening. Mm. 
Yes, that's a good way to put it. We see what's happening, but we're blind to why it's happening. You know what, I, I did not look into that. That is an excellent place to explore uh, because that is where the walls came down and where Rahab and her family were saved, but they probably had survivor's guilt forever. Well, if you think about that story with Rahab and the walls come down and, and she has the cords tied and her family is freed, that that they're stepping over the dead smelling bodies of their neighbors and they're hearing the cries of their neighbors and the place that they've known all their lives is going up in smoke and you're thinking like that is a traumatic experience and I would need therapy forever. And you would have an incredible amount, I, be I believe, I would have, let me speak for myself, I would have an incredible amount of survivor's guilt in the Rahab story. Oh, this is after. The walls came tumbling down in the Old Testament. That's a long time ago. But it's a historic event, and, and, and it, it means a lot to the Jewish people um, that that's how great God was, because they just walked around seven times, and they blew their horn, and pff, done. And then they just went in and slaughtered. All right, so things we have to think about. What is it that we're missing? What behaviors are we looking at but not looking at the cause of? We do help as our, our, our ministry is, is about feeding, clothing, and housing Southbridge, but we, we can't do it all because we're not that big of a group. We don't have that many resources, but we do what we can do. And yet there are things that we don't see for whatever reason. They just don't register in our heads. So if you see something new and then, and then it finally registers, let us know what it is because it's amazing what goes on in our lives that just takes a back burner. Or if you're like me, you just put it somewhere in your head and then you can't find it again. Because <laughs> I have a, a Donald Duck brain, not a Mickey Mouse one. So, would you pray with me? Holy God, our Father and our Mother, we are so thankful that you have given us these scriptures and these stories that help us to understand what happened then and that help us to understand how we are now. I want to thank you for your guidance and for allowing us to hope and have faith and listen. And we ask you, Lord, to remove the cobwebs from our eyes spiritually so that we will not be blind anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joys and concerns, and I don't have a pen. Do you have a pen? Pencil. No, a pencil's work. That'll work. All right. Joys and concerns. Uh, um, Karen Horton is in the hospital. I don't know why, but she called yesterday. Then has anybody been in contact with her? She's in the hospital. I don't know why. Oh my! Okay. She's at Saint Vic's, Saint Vincent, Saint Vincent. So let's keep her in our prayers. I'm going to go up this afternoon after our class. 
or call and make sure she is still there. She said yesterday that they were admitting her. So I'm hoping she's still there, but you know, you need to call first. It's all the way up to Worcester. All right, anything else? Lane. Okay, that's that's not bad for a preemie, right? Twenty making it to twenty five weeks is. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, and did Hamer. All right, what was his last name again? Jordan, and he was a Vietnam vet? Yeah. It's whose? Yeah, my son's oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Laura or Helen, I know. I know. Well, I was getting Lane's name right too. I thought I must get yours right. <laughs> right. I didn't hear the last four words. Be louder. <laughs> Kidneys and heart. <laughs> okay. Okay. Kidney and heart failure. Yes. Um, a friend's husband, Tom, who had emergency surgery, so prayers healing. Anybody else? Callie. Eloise White, okay. All right, let us pray for these concerns. Holy God, we wanna lift up these folks today who need our prayers and your help. TJ and Lisa, who had a, a premature baby, um, and Dave Jorns, who was a Vietnam vet and um, passed away from Parkinson's. We pray for Karen Horton and the other homebound people in our congregation, uh, Lim Walker and Carol and Fred Young and Norm Phillips and Ann, Ann, and who else was it? Fran. Fran, thank you. Gloria. Gloria. Yes, Gloria is home, but I don't know if she's doing well. She's doing well. Okay, that's great. Um, we pray for uh, uh, Lord's brother David, who has kidney and heart failure, for Callie's friend Eloise, and for Tom's emergency surgery. We lift up those uh, concerns and joys that have been left unsaid, Lord, that, that are, we ponder in our heart for things that we need and for things that other people need. We thank you for your love and your support. We thank you for your son who not just died for us, but lives for us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of intercession in the bold print. We come to you because we know you'll hear our cry. We come to you because you call us near to you. We come to you because you deliver and save. We come to you now with our prayers and petitions. We pray for the local and universal church. Give us the humility to walk in your way. 
We pray for the leaders in our nations and the nations around the world. Give them the courage to walk in peace. We pray for those who are in need. Give us ears to hear their cries and be agents of your mercy. We pray for those who have pain. Heal, touch, and deliver them, O God. We remember those who have died. Help us give comfort to those who are left behind. We lift our hidden prayers to you in silence, for you hear even which is unspoken. All glory and praise is yours now and forever. Amen. And please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is in the blue hymnal, number 708, Go Forth for God. verse 4.
please join us for that.